All right, so I've heard some good. I've heard some bad. But if there's one thing I've learned from watching Blade over the years, it's that some other effers will always be trying to ice skate uphill. Hey YouTube, what goes on? And welcome back to Dis About Action Figures, bringing you another action figure review. Tonight, taking a closer look at the new Marvel Legends, Marvel Knights, Mindless One Blade action figure. And I am freaking pumped to get this. I have loved the majority of this wave already. Uh, I just got this and Clea in the mail today. This came from Amazon. Clea came from Big Bad Toy Store. No, don't go running the Target. Don't go running the Walmart. These will not be there. I repeat, they will not be there. We were told by Dan Yoon via Twitter that this wave will not be available at big box locations. So if you want it, you got to grab it online, an online retailer, Amazon, or something of that nature. Uh, I am pumped to have this. I have the original blade from the Man Thing wave. I know people didn't like it. I did. I loved it at the time. I never had the Snipes blade. Uh, so this is definitely going to be a step up right here, I believe. Uh, so pumped to build the Mindless one as well. This wave might be one of the best waves of the year when everything is said and done for 2023. But if you're new to this channel, what we'll do is we'll take a closer look at the box. We'll crack it open. We'll look at how the figure looks closer up. We'll look at the accessories. We'll move around a little bit. And we'll do the favorite thing I love to do in all these videos. Compare to other Marvel Legends and other figures from other action figure lines. And again, huge appreciation for the fact we have this packaging back. We made it through that all cardboard era and here we are back with this classic looking marvel legends uh, box display we do have the art on the side which looks really freaking cool we have the blade logo on the top uh, all those accessories just look great everything's just laid out so nicely on this box on the back there is the write-up destined to hunt vampires and destroy the evil of the world blade is a vampire human hybrid with the greatest strengths of each and i'm calling it right now i think we're going to get this again uh, slightly modified with different accessories, maybe just less accessories, as a Marvel Legends retro carded Spider-Man wave figure. I really think we're going to see it in the Spider-Man retro wave. Uh, we saw it, obviously, in the animated cartoon an awful lot as a character, so I think we're going to see it again down the road. But right now, this is the best way to get him for the Mindless One wave. And just being thorough, there is the Build-A-Figure on the back along with the cross-sell. You had to buy six figures in order to build uh, the Mindless One, which was Iron Man, Blade, uh, Lady Bullseye, Luke Cage, the Fist Ninja, and Clea, and then Daredevil's the seventh figure that does not come with the Build-A-Figure piece. Daredevil's the only one I did not pick up as of yet. I was holding off maybe down the road to get that on Amazon for a couple dollars off, but I may eventually cave because it looks really freaking cool. And here is Blade, all of his accessories out of the packaging, and I think this looks really friggin' cool. Tons of vampire fighting weapons right here. We get the build a figure head, we get the build a figure accessory for the head. Uh, it looks really good so far, from what I can tell. I'm gonna say the one obvious criticism here. I, other people have said it, and now that I have it in hand, I have to completely agree. I hate that his arms don't go down at his sides. I have a major problem with figures where this occurs, whether it's a wrestling figure or whether it's a Marvel Legends figure. It happens from time to time. Even with newer figures and newer bucks, you still see it basically happening from time to time. I hate when that can't be done to the point where I've actually not bought figures, but I've seen reviews and people have told me the arms don't go down to the side. Uh, this one did not deter me, however, because one, I really wanted to build the mindless one. And secondly, uh, Blade's an awesome freaking character uh, for the last at least 25 years, whether it's comics or movies. And of course, we're getting more Blade in the MCU down the road sometime soon. So one way or the other, I needed this. I wasn't gonna let that prevent me from picking it up, but I'm sure it'll come up more throughout the review. Taking a close look at the figure up close, this head sculpt is freaking fierce. They really killed it with the vampire fangs. The screaming face looks really freaking cool. The sunglasses, the haircut came out good. We get the flat top going on. Uh, the last figure, I know we got a bald head, so I think I still have that laying around. We'll compare it later. He has the cut into the hair on both sides, which looks really freaking cool. Uh, underneath, the armor looks great. The texture on here is really awesome looking. We do get the silver paint down here on the belt buckle. The belt, I believe, is molded on there. I don't think that's a removable piece. Uh, the jacket itself looks great. We get red on the inside of the jacket, moving its way up to the top where we get the, the black color on the inside. Uh, again, just basically looking at the buttons on the jacket look pretty well done. I like that we do have the collar up here on the jacket as well. Um, the folds, again, on the coat itself came out looking good to give it that leather and aged look to it. Uh, we do have on the back attached to the jacket. I believe that's glued on there. 
We do have a sheath for the sword. We do have some symbols or something going on right here on that as well. So it's not just a blank piece of plastic. Uh, even on the back, the hair looking very Wesley Snipish from the movie right there, looking good. Uh, again, down here, we have the uh, back of the robe go or the back of the jacket going on right here uh, for the waistband to tie off the jacket. So again, overall, this thing looks great. Of course, we have freaking pockets. Love cargo pockets. I still rock the cargo pants from time to time. So love the kind of cargo pants here going on uh, for the... Uh, actual outfit he's gonna be fighting in for the uniform so again this came out looking really freaking cool the head sculpt is great uh you can't quite see it here but he does have the red tongue and the white uh, back behind the white teeth so again came out looking really good overall but the articulation is what i'm gonna be a little bit concerned about but before we do that let's look at all the accessories all right so the accessories i was probably the most pumped about are these kind of like boomerang looking um weapons with the blades i believe it's a halady let me know in the comments i, I googled it and looked it up use the google machine right i believe these are halady's but if i'm wrong let me know down below i will gladly admit to it if i'm incorrect uh, but these came out looking really freaking cool there are two of them they're identical uh we do get kind of like the red wrap uh on the on the middle part here for i guess we'd actually hold it and throw it so these are pretty awesome we've seen blade throw these in the movies before to get vampires from a distance uh, we also get two stakes which again the stakes are also identical uh, again if you're fighting vampires you probably need stakes right uh, these are a pretty decent looking texture it's not just like a smooth look to it you can see if you look closely there are kind of some lines on there to make it look like it actually is made of wood and not just like a smooth plastic which it actually is made out of uh, then we do get the two gripping hands that comes with the two fists that are on there so gripping hands for both uh, we do have a horizontal hinge on that gripping hand and then on this gripping hand it is also a horizontal hinge and I'm guessing the fists are also going to be horizontal hinges there. Uh, so it would have been nice to get a uh, vertical hinge for the sword, but we didn't get that. And then the to build out our mindless one build a figure. This is freaking great. It's a great looking head sculpt to go with the mindless one. I am so excited to get this in hand uh, and to build that. We'll do a separate video to build that, obviously. And this is actually pretty cool as well. We do get uh, a piece that will plug into the front that goes here on the face or the eyes. So that just pops in really nice there. And that's a really great effect right there that you would hope down the road we see utilized in other capacities. But man, that mindless one is going to be a great build figure to put together. It might be my build figure of the year when it's all said and done. Uh, but right now, let's continue talking about Blade. The accessories look great. He looks great up close. Let's move around a little bit and see what we can do, even though he has that big bulky jacket on. All right, so articulations where I'm a little bit nervous. The shoulder does not go very far up at all. I'm not going to force it, like literally maybe slightly further. I'm not happy with that. Also, it will rotate all the way around, but honestly, I got it stuck doing that. It's because it kind of gets caught weird here, so I'm not going to do it again. Uh, you do have double jointed elbows, but again, they are pinned. So you can see where the pins in the elbows are there. Uh, upper bicep swivels going on right there. Uh, we do have rotation at the hand. It is a horizontal hinge, so we'll go left and right. Head will go all the way around. Just going to be careful up back in the back part. It will look up about that far. It will look down very far burying the chin not a whole actually decent tilt i'd say that's decent for the pivot it's enough to at least make him kind of look like he's uh, looking at you funny right uh, as far as the legs go we'll kick forward about that far and we'll kick back a little bit right there uh, there is an upper thigh cut going on uh, there is a waist swivel which i'm going to show you now because because of the jacket <laughs> in order to show you the double jointed knee it's a bump the camera, sorry. You have to be able to do that. So again, double jointed pinless knee, which is nice. Again, loving those cargo pockets, right? I mentioned the waist swivel going on. He can do the splits about that far out if you wanna see him do the splits. Foot, uh, we have a boot cut down here as well. The foot will go down about that far. Foot will go up decently far as well. It's also on a rocker. So as far as torso, again, the jacket will allow him to go forward with the torso. But because of the jacket, you're not going back very far because of that jacket getting in the way and encumbering it. So again, overall, decent articulation as far as the legs and the knees and such. But those shoulders, ooh, I'm not really happy about that at all. And again, the jacket looks great. But because of the jacket, you're not going to get as much uh, articulation going on in the torso. All right, let's do the thing I love to do, and that's compare them to other Marvel Legends and other figures in other lines. All right, one other slight uh, complaint I have is there's not really any storage for the rest of the weapon. So obviously the sword will store in the back on his back, which is great. However, uh, if you have him holding either one of these or the stakes, there's nowhere to go with the other parts. So had they put some sort of uh, system on his legs or his belt to store those, that would have been really cool. Again, it would have been extra, but, you know, I would have dug some extra with that.
So one of the first comparisons most of you probably want to see will be the current blade from the Mindless One Wave compared to the blade from the Man Thing Wave from several years ago. I still dig this. I know people didn't like it. There is some reuse going on between uh, this one and this one. I think the chest, the torso is pretty similar on both. Uh, but again, we got a lot more with this. This looks a lot more at the blade I think we all think of when we picture blade in the comics. Um, and you know what? As far as head swaps go, this looks actually really freaking good. I can't tell which one I like better. Let me know in the comments. Do you like the old blade head on this body better? Or do you like the new blade head on the old body better? Um, they both look like they fit relatively well. There's one heck of a pop when I got that one on there. If anything, this looks slightly too big. This looks slightly too small, but I don't think that it's big enough or small enough to make it not work. The skin tones work out pretty well in addition to that. So yeah, you can kind of mess around with your blade a little bit if you want to on your shelf and kind of make your perfect version of blade. But let me know down below. Do you like, again, the new head on the old body better or the old head on the new body better? Here is Blade compared to two of his wave mates, the Lady Bullseye and also the uh, Fist Ninja from the Daredevil subline. And these all look great together. Again, Marvel Knights is a really great banner to put all these under. They're all kind of darker characters, edgier characters. So it makes sense to have them all under the same line uh, in the same wave. And again, the Mindless One, the perfect build figure to go with these. So these look really good. And this is one of those waves where if you do pick the entire thing up, uh, obviously, you want to put Blade with some of your other Marvel Knights or Marvel Legends. You, know, you want to put Lady Bullseye with your Daredevil figures. But putting this entire wave together on the same shelf could look really, really good, especially being that it's spooky season. And some more Marvel Legend comparisons. I mentioned earlier how Blade was known to be on the Spider-Man animated series. So was Daredevil, although I believe in a different costume. I can't recall. Let me know in the comments. Uh, and there is our Black Suit Symbiote Spider-Man. So again, kind of giving you an idea how this Blade figure in the buck that it's on compares to the buck which is the uh spider-man renew your vows that we have daredevil and spider-man and uh ben riley spider-man and deadpool on uh from that sdcc exclusive and then also how he does scale with that retro spider-man body right there that we used for the symbiote spider-man so i think these look really great together although now seeing the black and white and the red makes realize a character we have to see with blade and that comparison i was referring to was the walgreens exclusive punisher frank castle marvel knights himself uh but also i wanted to grab the uh moon knight from the spider-man wave uh, from several years ago all three of these are going to look great if you kind of build out that marvel knights kind of that darker sort of element of the mcu uh, on your shelf they're just going to look freaking awesome together here are some non-marvel legend but hasbro comparisons we have our shipwreck gi joe classified figure hanging out with the indiana jones adventure series club ob1 indie figure from temple of doom and again you could always see how undersized the black series and the indiana jones figures are compared to gi joe classified and marvel legends here's blade chilling with two other characters you might see trying to slay some vampires uh being the ash evil dead uh, two figure from the SDCC two pack from several years ago and the Mezco toys John Constantine and I'll tell you what these are three characters that are gonna look really cool on your horror shelf uh, especially if you want to get them busted up some monsters for Halloween here's Blade compared to two outside the box types of figures here we do have the Luigi from the Jazzware Super Mario line from this year's movie as well as this year's NECA Ultimate Alf figure and having to back the camera up a little bit, here is Blade as compared to the DC Multiverse McFarlane toys, Big Bad Mother Fragger Lobo. And you know what? If Blade's taken on Lobo, he's going to need all the weapons he can get his hands on. And last, and as everybody loves to say, certainly not least, here is the Marvel Legends, Marvel Knights, Mindless One Blade action figure as compared to the Jazzwares AEW Unrivaled Orange Cassidy. And you know what? I can't help but notice that Orange is slightly taller than Blade, but something tells you that sword and that uh, vampire weapon's going to probably even the odds. So that's going to do it for our Marvel Legends, Mindless One, Marvel Knights Blade action figure review. Final thoughts. It's really freaking cool. It's a cool looking figure. It's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. No action figure actually ever is perfect, but there's definitely some flaws with this, with the articulation. I'm not really that happy about. I mentioned the thing with the arms. 
I know other people also said they're not happy about that as well. Uh, the head sculpt is freaking amazing. The jacket looks really cool, despite the fact you're losing articulation. Doesn't matter, it's blade. You need the jacket. Uh, this is going to look great on all sorts of shelves, whether it's horror figures, whether it's Marvel horror, whether it's your Spider-Man shelf, whether it's your Avengers shelf. However you want to put Blade out there with your Marvel Legends or action figure display, he's going to look really freaking cool. They give you a lot of accessories with this, which is also very awesome. Kind of makes up for some of the flaws with the figure that I was not that happy with. But getting two stakes, getting two of the uh, other weapon as well, getting the sword. Overall, uh, the punching fists, this thing, it does come with a lot of stuff, which is pretty awesome. Again, don't go running out to your uh, big box locations. It's not going to be there. Uh, probably best bets to pick it up at Big Bad Toy Store, Hasbro Pulse. Uh, you know, Amazon, if it becomes available again, something like that. But I feel like this is not a figure you're going to want to pass on considering it is a character you're going to want on your shelf. Stay tuned for a upcoming review as we will build the mindless one. I'm so pumped for that build a figure. When they first announced this, I was playing uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, the exact stage where you were fighting endless mindless ones. So I can't wait to see how that's going to look when I do put that together. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you are new, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free for you. It does not cost you anything, and it helps us grow the channel tremendously in the march to 5,000 subscribers. We're very close right now. While you're at it, go ahead and click that bell for notifications because that way YouTube notifies you and tells you when we post new content here to the channel, like our weekly toy hunts, reviews, and live streams. Leave a comment down below. Hit that like button. And for daily toy content and daily toy updates, try checking us out over at Instagram and Twitter at disavowed underscore 12. Hey, everybody, if you're going toy hunting this week, please try to remember the three Ps of the toy hunt. Patience, persistence, but most of all, politeness. Take care, stay healthy, and I'll be seeing all of you at the pegs.